Welcome to Mojo Plays, and this is our list of the top 20 biggest ripoffs in gaming history. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. We understand that originality is almost impossible without a little inspiration. These titles, on the other hand, are practically carbon copies. We're not saying all of the games here are bad, it's just that their similarities with other games are too striking to ignore. Number 20, Nova, based on the Halo series. Fairly good ripoff on our list, Nova is a first-person shooter developed and published by Gameloft. Although, had we not revealed the title, one could think this was a new Halo game for phones and the PSP, and you wouldn't be the first to do so. Those who reviewed Nova often compared the title to Microsoft's first-person shooter, noting similar designs in UI, characters, and environments. Still, the game provided an engaging single-player campaign and a surprisingly functional multiplayer mode. So, FPS fans might want to give the recent remaster a shot. Number 19, Garfield Go, AR Treasure Hunt, based on Pokemon Go. Since the 2016 debut of Niantic's Pokemon Go, several other companies have tried to replicate its success like Ghostbusters World and Jurassic World Alive. Then we have Garfield Go, AR Treasure Hunt, a game that's about as monotone as the orange cat's voice and makes whacking spiders seem more fun. Flick lasagna into Garfield's bowl to get him up to help you find lost treasures and complete scavenger hunts. Besides the minigames that are on the same level of stupid as Odie, there's nothing about Garfield Go that makes itself memorable. It's such a blatant, uncreative cash grab that we'd rather relive those Monday feelings ten times over. Number 18, Rock Band Series, based on the Guitar Hero series. Well, this is a weird situation. In its first few years, Guitar Hero ruled the gaming industry with its revolutionary take on the music genre. That is, until developer Harmonix departed from the franchise after Guitar Hero Encore rocked the 80s in July 2007. Merely four months later, Harmonix launched their own series that replicated Guitar Hero's formula. Rock Band followed the same mechanics of pressing colored buttons in time with the song, but it was a bigger pain in the ass to deal with. Seriously, what kind of game makes you buy four peripherals? While Rock Band saw its own success, the franchise would suffer the same fate as Guitar Hero, collapsing from manufacturing and licensing costs. Number 17, Farmville, based on Farmtown. Remember all of those Zynga games that flooded Facebook at the turn of the decade? Well, not all of them were entirely original. Take Farmville, for example, a farming simulator that saw millions of monthly users spamming each other with invites to help grow crops and feed animals. However, there was another game that was doing this months before Farmville debuted. This is Farmtown, which started out as a small game before it gained traction on Facebook. Zynga took note of this and managed to steal the spotlight and aesthetic from Farmtown in late 2009. Farmtown still saw a few hundred thousand monthly users, but it never reached the same level of success as Farmville. Number 16, Fighters History Series, based on the Street Fighter series. A sincere form of flattery or a shameless copycat? Judging from the quality, we'd say Fighters History falls under the ladder. Data East, whom we'll see more of later in the list, developed this 2D fighter but seemingly forgot about what makes Street Fighter so incredible, particularly Street Fighter 2. It's fast, tight, and shows some personality with its colorful characters and environments. Fighter's history does anything but that, opting for a slower experience and trying to implement character weak points. Capcom noticed the similarities between the games and attempted to sue Data East, but lost the case on account of Scene's affair. At least the judge acknowledged Data East's possible intentions to copy Street Fighter. Number 15, Disney Infinity, based on the Skylander series. What was that? It felt like something crashed in the city. When Skylanders launched in 2011, the idea exploded and formed a new facet of the gaming market, toys to life. 
One of the first companies to try and capitalize on this was the Walt Disney Company with Disney Infinity, a sandbox game where players could control their favorite Disney characters to create their own levels or play various campaigns. A good take on the toys to life genre, but it felt too much like a cash in on Skylander's success. Do you have any idea how much money you'd have to spend on blind packs just to get a specific vehicle or tool you want? Too much. Nice shot! Captain! Number 14, Unearthed, Trail of Ibn Battuta, based on the Uncharted series. Ask yourself this, what is it about Uncharted that makes the series so great? Would you say it's the beautiful music and captivating environments? How about the compelling writing and acting performances? Whichever feature you chose was not accomplished at all in Unearthed Trail of Ivan Batuta. As one would expect from a game starring a rejected Nathan Drake design, Unearthed spectacularly failed to replicate anything Uncharted was memorable for. The controls were frustrating, the mechanics were broken, and the story came off like terrible fanfiction. And yet, developer Semaphore has found enough reason to begin developing a sequel as of February 2018. Let's hope it turns out well. Maybe? That was close. I had a feeling I had been watched. Number 13, Sonic Shuffle, based on the Mario Party series. Let's be honest, Sonic has been copying Nintendo's plumber since his debut in 1991. Remember, Sonic was conceived after co-creator Yuji Naka tried to finish the first level of Super Mario Bros as fast as possible. While the blue blur has had some original games, the most overt ripoff in the series was Sonic Shuffle. Ripping pages from Mario Party, players can move Sonic and friends around a board to collect rings, play minigames, and take part in boss battles. Sounds exciting, if only the game didn't have the personality of Sonic 06. Minigames are oversimplistic, level designs are dull, and the card system overcomplicates movement. Man, talk about a buzzkill. Number 12, Infinite Crisis, based on League of Legends and Dota 2. The early 2010s saw a rise in MOBA games, specifically League of Legends and Dota 2. In the same way we saw the toys to life market, MOBAs suddenly exploded and everyone wanted a slice of the pie, including Warner Bros. Interactive. With developer Turbine, now WB Games Boston, the two launched Infinite Crisis, a MOBA starring the greatest superheroes and villains from DC Comics. While the concept seemed like a surefire success, it looked too similar to LOL and Dota 2. There just wasn't anything to make itself stand out. Even the roster had nothing against League's dozens of characters. And so, the MOBA shut down in August 2015, merely five months after launch. Justice! Take that! Number 11, Konami Crazy Racers, based on the Mario Kart series. We had quite a handful of kart racers to choose from, but Konami Crazy Racers really stuck out. Credit where credit is due, Konami Crazy Racers is not a terrible game. With colorful visuals, exceptional sound design, and a colorful cast of racers hailing from Konami's greatest franchises, there's enough to give Konami Crazy Racers a chance. However, the similarities between this and Mario Kart are too glaring, so much so that even critics were pointing out the obvious replication. The game may be a solid kart racer, but it doesn't bring anything new to the genre, which may be enough to stifle one's enjoyment with it. Number 10, Castle Miner series, based on Minecraft. Most Minecraft ripoffs fail to see what makes the game so special. So long as you're dropping the player in the middle of nowhere, give them a pickaxe, and drop a bunch of random enemies in the world, you're gold. This is exactly what the Castle Miner series did four months before Minecraft 1.0 officially launched. Regardless of the bland gameplay and unimaginative environment, Castle Miner became one of the most successful Xbox Live indie games, selling over 1 million copies 10 months after launch. The series would later spawn two sequels, Castle Miner Z, which copied popular survival games, and Castle Miner Warfare, which tried copying Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Number 11. 
number 9, Tattoo Assassins, based on the Mortal Kombat series. Anna win. When you're developing with the sole purpose of competing with a mega popular game like Mortal Kombat, maybe you're in business for the wrong reasons. This was evident with Data East Tattoo Assassins, a 2D fighter that utilized digitized actors and claimed to have more than 2,000 fatalities. Sounds like a Mortal Kombat killer, right? I mean, you can kill your opponent by turning them into a clown or a pig or a knight or a lady in a dress. Okay, these are freaking lame. Thankfully, the game didn't make it past a few prototypes. Had it seen an official launch, the game would have most likely died because Killer Instinct and Primal Rage were already giving Mortal Kombat a run for its bloody money. Number 8. The Great Gianna Sisters, based on Super Mario Bros. Even today, there are countless games trying to trick people into thinking they're playing a Mario game, or at least something like it. One of the first games to do this was The Great Gianna Sisters, released just four years after Super Mario Bros. stormed the market. While it did bolster a few power-ups that functioned differently from the Fire Flower, some of the levels and enemies make the game look more like a knockoff than it probably is. The two looked so similar that Nintendo actually pressured retailers into not selling the game. Number 7, Oceanhorn, Monsters of Uncharted Seas, based on the Legend of Zelda series. Oceanhorn isn't a terrible game, not by any stretch of the imagination. It provides a solid action adventure for mobile platforms that only takes about a week to finish. Although, we can't blame you if the game feels a little… off. The art style, world, and gameplay hits a little too close to home. Our hero uses bombs, archery, and even a spin attack with his sword. There are even moments in the game where you have to sail to various islands. With all of these combined, it makes it very hard to withhold saying, this is just like Zelda. The deserts of Pirta, mysterious gill folks drop, beaches of Southwind Isle. Number 6, Saints Row and Saints Row 2, based on the Grand Theft Auto series. Today, we know Saints Row as a quirky sandbox adventure with the weirdest guns and superpowers. Seriously, where else can you play as a toilet and assault random people on the streets? However, it did originate as a franchise that was supposed to compete with Grand Theft Auto, a feat no one could dare to accomplish today. The first two Saints Row games attempted to capture the same vibe as Rockstar's blockbuster series. It had the same urban atmosphere, the same open world gameplay, but it's clear the two evolved into their own respective identities as the years passed, like two childhood friends. Number 5, Dante's Inferno, based on the God of War series. Dante's Inferno had a lot going for itself with its art design, levels, and creative environments. So how does it come off as a God of War ripoff? Well, as far as the game is concerned, it mixes up hack and slash gameplay with quick time events just like Sony's Ghost of Sparta. This led to critics constantly drawing comparisons between the two, often citing God of War as the better option and deeming Dante's Inferno as an unoriginal clone. What made its public image even worse was the fact that Dante's Inferno launched an entire month before God of War 3. So, can you really blame reviewers? It also didn't help that the protagonist shares his name with another icon of the hack and slash genre. Number 4, PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, based on the Super Smash Bros. series. There are a ton of Smash Bros. clones out there, but there's a few reasons why PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale makes the list. While the game tried doing its own thing and making super moves the only way to score points, PlayStation All-Stars didn't do much else with the fighting crossover formula. It was basically a slower and less energetic Smash Bros. for PS3. To make matters worse, Sony used Nintendo's flagship fighter as a YouTube tag for one of PlayStation All-Stars trailers. This shady marketing tactic made headlines, and it disappointed both PlayStation and Nintendo fans, to put it gently. Sleep time! Just how great my powers are! Let's try this again! Number 3, The Simpsons Road Rage, 
based on Crazy Taxi. Didn't think we were going to make it, did you? Thanks for the lift, dude. Just like Crazy Taxi, The Simpsons Road Rage tasked players with speeding through Springfield and bringing passengers to various locations. Outside of characters and locations, Road Rage was almost an exact copy of Sega's hit driving game. So much so that Sega filed a lawsuit against developer Radical Entertainment and publisher Electronic Arts. The case was quickly settled before it went to court, but this wouldn't be the last franchise for The Simpsons to copy. Even after this debacle, The Simpsons Skateboarding and The Simpsons Hit and Run would copy Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and Grand Theft Auto, respectively. Nice 50 50 grind. Whoa! Number 2 Candy Crush, based on the Bejeweled series. Shariki may have originated Match 3 puzzle games, but Bejeweled was the franchise to popularize it. Before their big break with Plants vs. Zombies, PopCap Games created this dazzling and relaxing puzzle series that would fall from grace in the early 2010s. Following the microtransaction-heavy Bejeweled Blitz, King would launch their own Match 3 puzzler in 2012. Candy Crush was no different than Bejeweled, tasking players to match three pieces of candy and match more to create candy with special effects. The game was, and still is, aggressive with its microtransactions, but it was successful enough to overthrow Bejeweled as the top Match 3 game. Sweet. Number 1. The War Z, aka Infestation Survivor Stories, based on Day Z. This indeed was the biggest ripoff in gaming history. As if riding the coattails of DayZ wasn't enough, The War Z misled customers by advertising features that weren't in the game at all. They didn't even mention their shady monetization scheme, demanding players pay a premium currency if they didn't want to wait four hours to respawn. In other words, the game managed to copy everything about DayZ except honesty, and it would be removed from Steam two days after launch only to return in February 2013. And yet, it still managed to sell just under 3 million copies before servers shut down in 2016. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Place, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.